Noosa this morning. Beautiful sunny morning and all of a sudden it just started hammering down with rain. But you'll see I'm dressed today in my full-blown Criterium outfit. I've got my aero helmet on, I've got my Knights of Suburbia jersey, and I've got my Crit Pig Companion, my LA Sprint road bike underneath me. You can hear it purring. You love that sound. And essentially what I wanted to do in this video, it's a bit of a sad day. You see, I'm gonna be selling this Crip Pig Companion and I'll explain what a Crip Pig is shortly. Reason being, uh, many of my subscribers will know I recently built another road bike, the Chapter 2 Rare Ray, and that's a Crip Pig bike as well essentially. So there's no point in having two machines built for Criterium Racing when, you know, there's been one Criterium in my local area in the last couple of months. So, to pay tribute to the LA Sprint and what I've done with this road bike, what I wanted to do, I know there's been a lot of talk online recently about the LA Sprint and its credentials as a, a Criterium road bike. Peter Sagan recently raced it at the Tour Down Under. I wanted to give you my thoughts on this machine as a Crit Pig Companion. So I've just rocked up at the Girraween Sports Complex here in Noosa. I've got a purpose-built Criterium track and I'll get the drone footages overlay as I'm speaking. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do some efforts and then after those efforts, I'm gonna roll around and talk to you about two factors when it comes to the LA Sprint road bike. Now, if you want a full review on this bike, I've done that, I'll link to that below. So it's not gonna be a full sit down comprehensive review, but the factors that I'm gonna to talk to you about is number one, it's performance credentials in a Criterium, is it good enough? And then number two is a crash factor. I think when you think about racing your bike, road racing, time trial, Criteriums, Criteriums are the highest risk of crashing. And I think it's an important factor to consider when you are investing your own money into a Criterium bike. But before we do those two things, I talked about this being my Crit Pig companion before, and I need to explain to you all what a Crit Pig is. Now, the Crip Pig, the term originated out of Melbourne, one of the best Criterium scenes in the world, and I don't think anyone's really collaborated in the past about, okay, what exactly is a Crip Pig? We all sort of talk about it, we think we know what it is, and last night on Instagram and over uh, WhatsApp, we've come up with a definition of a Crip Pig, because it's not online, and I'm, and I'm gonna submit this to Urban Dictionary. I wanna thank Cal Douglas and also Woosler, Dal Woonton and Tommy Dan Curvis for helping me validate this. So I'm just gonna read this out to you now. A Criterion Pig is a little heavier than a roadie and may smell a little funny from time to time. They're always desperate to race their bikes, rolling around in a pigsty they call their Criterion track. When push comes to shove, with little white envelopes awaiting, they get ready to drop a shoulder and open their snouts while putting their curly tails in the air to go for the win. So that is a Crip Pig, very poetic. Callan, well done. A few little tweaks added there by Woosler and then validated by Tommy Nan Curves, but I think that's outstanding. And to, in order to be a Crip Pig, you see I turned into a bit of a Crip Pig before I left Melbourne, I was sniffing out races left, right and centre. I was going there to try and win. I was training like a Crip Pig, etc. I needed a companion. And originally that was going to be the Chapter 2 Rare Raid, but in the end it ended up being my LA Sprint for the vast majority of races. And it became my Crip Pig companion. So let's roll around now and talk about the LA Sprint for Criterion Racing. Okay, so I've just finished my efforts. I'm not gonna roll around the track and talk to you about the bike because there's just too much sun out there and I'm getting the lens. I wanted to thank Jeff, one of the channel supporters, for suggesting some different types of efforts I could do in the comments section in one of my previous videos. I've actually incorporated those. And for those of you who have just landed on the channel, this is where I do cycling videos, both inspirational and entertaining, and I love cycling product reviews, notably nice road bikes. So if that sounds up your alley and you enjoy this video, consider supporting the channel by subscribing below. So quickly, what's on this bike? 
Obviously I've got the LA sprint frame. I've got these MV 6.7 tubulars. They're not actually mine. I borrowed them off a mate about 18 months ago. I never gave them back. Promised to sell them at the end of a Criterium season a year and a half ago or something, and I never did. So I'm, he's gonna finally get his money back when I sell this. We've, I've got a SRAM red crank. This is actually from an old bike and a quark power meter in here. And I've got 105 gearing on the rest of the bike. So you can see I've got 105 here. 105 up there and obviously 105 levers and an alloy um, handlebar system so that's pretty much the complete bike and this bike's performance credentials i think first of all when we talk about criterium even before we talk about performance it's important to talk about aesthetics because you don't want to be rocking up to criteriums riding a giant defy it just doesn't look good you're not going to look hip and cool and that's a very important factor when racing criteriums and this bike right here my friends is it's a pretty good looking road bike in terms of its performance credentials for criterium racing it's an aggressive proposition so the stack from here to here up to there which enables the rider to get higher or lower this is more aggressive than the tarmac and more aggressive than the venge so you can get super aerodynamic on this road bike and if you look at some of the tube shapes the seat post here or the seat post up here i should say and the seat tube they're both aero in fact the seat post here is taken from the specialized venge and the seat stays which are dropped also aerodynamic having said that when I take these MV 6.7s off and put on some training wheels, it doesn't really feel like an, an aero proposition. Unlike, say, I recently reviewed the Felt AR, or I'm currently riding the Chapter 2 Rare When you take off the aero wheels and put on some heavy wheels, it still feels like an aerodynamic race machine, whereas this doesn't. It's really dependent on having some solid wheels on it to go super quick. Um, the front end, I, I should probably mention as well, the fork, outside of the fact that it's got this graffiti, it's actually taken from the Specialized Tarmac. Now, this is an SL5 fork, the current LA Sprints, exactly the same frame, except you can now get them in disc, and it's got the SL6 fork. Now, in terms of its weight, I weighed this recently at a dealer here in Noosa, and the bike weighed about eight kilograms, just under. Now, if I compare that to the Specialized S-Works Venge, Got, this has got about 500 grams on it and if I compare that to say a tarmac SL6 it's got almost a kilo so if you're riding crit courses with a hill you're definitely going to notice the extra weight you're going to have to push out more watts and you're going to fatigue yourself in a race on a flat course not so much now out of the saddle cornering it gets a big tick it's very stiff it's got this they call it Deluzio smart world technology in the frame and that According to Specialized, makes it a more compliant, stiffer ride, and certainly I feel that. Now, having said that, it is a little bit harsh. Aluminium is known to be a harsher material than, say, carbon fiber and also titanium, and even still in some cases. And you're going to fatigue yourself, but in a one hour crit, does it matter so much? I don't think so. If you're riding 150 k's on this thing, you're definitely going to notice the fatigue in the neck and shoulders and in the lower back. So, the one issue that I have with this bike when it comes to performance in Criterium Racing. Yes, it's a little bit heavier, but that's not the, the main issue that I have. When you're racing Criteriums, particularly A-grade, you're constantly out of the saddle, you're getting back on the wheel. There are a lot of attacks, it's relentless. If I think about Glenvale, the first 20, 25 minutes, it's, uh, it's like taking an Uzi to your legs. It really is relentless attacks. and. This bike right here, because it's a little heavier, and in my opinion, aluminium in the bottom bracket here, it's less responsive. When I put the power through the crank, the bike responds, but it doesn't respond like, say, the Chapter 2 Rare Ray. It doesn't respond like a Venge. It doesn't respond like a Tarmac. And I feel like, as a result of that, you're having to work a little bit harder to get back on the wheel. And at the end of an hour, you got a little bit more fatigue in your legs than, say, you would with a carbon fiber race bike. Now, for me, it's not a biggie because like, I'm not out of the saddle sprinting at the end of a criterium. I'm more, I'll try and go off the front and win that way. So those, that little bit of extra wattage that I need to put out to get back on the wheel, when I consider the crash factor, which I'll talk about second, isn't a big factor for me, but for some, I think it may be. Okay, so I've just wrapped up my training session with a 10 minute effort in the big ring on rollers. I'm absolutely cooked. 
So to wrap up this video, I wanted to talk about the crash factor. I think it's a massive consideration when you're racing criteriums. When you're purchasing a bike, investing in a criterium bike, yes, you want to know about performance, which I've just talked about, but you also want to know, okay, am I okay to go race this thing in a criterium? Am I okay to risk coming off on this thing more so than, say, riding down the beach or riding in a road race, etc.? Now, the thing about this bike right here, the frame cost me $1,500 AUD, okay? Now, build it up and we put some nice second-hand wheels on so really complete build with considering purchasing these wheels in a second-hand state you'd be talking you know just under five thousand dollars AUD now some of those other bikes that I've mentioned in today's video and other ones you, people may want to race with say like the Cervelo S5 or the Specialized Venge BMC Time Machine etc they're three times more expensive than this bike right here so if you come off on those things and you crash them, you're gonna be bloody upset. In fact, I've crashed in a Criterium, came off at about 55 k's an hour on a specialized S-Works tarmac, it was the SL5 model, but I was bloody upset. I remember coming off half concussed, cuts and bruises everywhere. And the first thing I did was assess my bike, even though I could barely stand. So despite the fact that, you know, performance-wise, it's not at the level of some of those bikes that I've mentioned, it's not far off. And if you crash this thing, you're not going to be overly upset. You'll be a bit disappointed, but you're not going to be crying. So I think to summarize, this bike really is the ultimate crit pig companion.